Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is a book. Thanks for watching. I got this backlog I'm trying to get through. <laughs> that was my brainstorm for how to get through all these books. So I actually went through my entire backlog of books, and it is not quite as bad as I thought it was. I, For some reason, I imagine in my head that it was literally like one to 200 comics, but it's not, especially since some of my comics are like somebody sent me 25 issues of American Flag by Howard Chaikin. Obviously, I'm not going to do 25 videos on that. I'll probably read a couple and then do a video on that. Some of them also, you know, someone sent me like entire Night Thrasher miniseries and like the first 13 issues of the main series. So like that's that's two videos. That's not 17 videos. Um, and then some of it's just stuff I've done before. Like I already did Cosmic Odyssey the graphic novel, somebody sent me all the individual issues. So, yeah, that, that just clears out like 40 or 50 right there. And then also, uh, uh, I was thinking of maybe giving some away as as uh, Halloween gifts, but then I had like about 20 comics that had all survived the cut. I put it on the community page earlier today, which is like a little like YouTube post that uh, or a Facebook kind of function that YouTube has. And... Uh, People seemed really impressed. Uh, I've done that two years in a row. It's gone really well. Uh, I go out to check that nobody doesn't just grab all of them, but you just kind of see them, you know, slowly every five, ten minutes, one will disappear, and then they're all gone. Um, so that was fun. So this is one of my backlog. This was borrowed uh, from a friend of mine who has a very, very nice uh, library, uh, comic book library. And uh, this was a freaking masterpiece and I did a quick little bit of research and it doesn't seem like this was really given any kind of renown or awards or anything it just kind of came out so today I finally buckled I like just forced myself I was like you are going to do the final inspection on all the the files on the once the files are done they're sent to the printers and then the printer has their own you know website very, it's really cool. You can do like, you click on this and you see the whole file. And then you click on this and you see the trim size. And you click on this and it does the, uh, it's called like the safe letter size. Because like you don't want to have, um, well this is kind of the old style where things don't go to the bleed. You don't want to have um, any like letters go like beyond like right here. Because then they get a little too close. Um, so uh, I went through and I got that done. And you know, it's Jawbreaker's God King. It's it's 96 pages. It's it's really good. I love it, but it's not a masterpiece. <laughs> like it didn't take. This guy's got a bibliography of like 12 books. You know, we're all like 300 pages each. Um, this is like almost like a life's work. I checked into this guy Philip Gillette. Um, I think he's only done a couple comics. Is Tyler Crooks done a lot of indie stuff? He's done a little bit for the big two as well. Um, I tried to get him more information. I went to his Twitter and it was just him talking about Trump. It wasn't very helpful. Um, uh, but uh, this is Petrograd and this is a, a library book. Now, I know that sounds like the stupidest thing to, in the, that's like saying liquid water. But when I say a library book, come on, we know I only read comics. So I'm talking about a library comic. But um uh, when I hired uh, Ibai Canales to do uh, the first Iron Sights, it was kind of controversial because he doesn't have an American comic book style. But the reason I didn't want anyone... If I could have gotten Jim Lee, I still would have picked Ibai Canales for, um, uh, for Iron Sights because Iron Sights is a story. It's about a bunch of kind of like regular people, you know, you know criminals, but like real world and it's like, in the two books, there's been like, I don't know, 30 characters of speaking roles and probably another 100 of, you know, guys who get shot who have to look different than all the other guys. Ibai has somehow made every single person look completely different. Uh, and, and the acting, the expressions are always excellent. There's one page here. I was going to have it ready. I don't know. I'm worried about it. I don't know why I'm worried about a copyright strike from, for this book. But um, probably should have uh, prepared this before I started the video. But the acting on this is so freaking good. It's insane. At one point, 
there's a character who is a well they call him a transvestite you don't say transvestite anymore um uh but this book came out in like 2011 and it was set almost 100 years prior but he, this uh transvestite is very excitedly talking about a plan to assassinate rasputin and here it is so uh he he's dressing up and then he's talking to this British agent named Clary and he's kind of taking off his uh, robe. He's got a, uh, what do you call these things? It's not a garter. Whatever those things are called. And then he takes it off and then look right here. He scratches his back because the whatever this thing is called, binder or whatever it's called, probably was pressing his skin, was maybe a little itchy. Is this in the script? Perhaps. Uh, but is it done subtly and in a way that... What I'm saying is this is acting. This is a story where it's not about Batman jumping through a skylight. It's about uh, acting. So what this is about is it's a uh, historical fiction. whole bunch of uh, you know accurate historical uh, uh, facts. And then a fictional story about this British agent who is basically told to uh, help assassinate... Rasputin or more precisely make it happen since a lot of people were talking about it But it never quite got done in order to actually uh, keep um, Russia from uh, Making peace with Germany during World War one they think that if Russia would make peace then all the Germans would be fighting You know the the English and the French at once and they, they need the the forces split um, they need a war on uh, two fronts. So as we see, we start off here in the trenches of uh, World War One. These uh, uh, Russian characters are well, it's characters, soldiers, are discussing uh, politics back home, and uh, just little touches like this, like this old-timey can opener. Um, but then we cut to uh, Cleary and the uh, the situation in uh, uh, Russia with Rasputin. Rasputin is a very interesting character. Uh, he's a real-life character. He's kind of a Svengali guru cult leader. And the uh, the czars of Russia, specifically the Tsarina and the ruling class, they were just completely enthralled to him. How long? I'm not sure. You know, it seems like one of those things that could be a fad. You know, obviously, if you're in a, a world war and there's a lot of privation and starvation and just tension and constantly you know, threats of revolution, you might cast about and just... You know, give uh, more credence to any you know charming and charismatic person, and uh, Rasputin certainly fit that bill. But what I liked was just uh, the acting and the research and the naturalness of the story. I mean, this thing really is a, a freaking masterpiece. And it, getting back to what I was talking about, is you know preparing my my Jawbreaker's God King. You know, I like it. It's good and it was profitable. And I'm very happy about the whole project. And people are going to get it. They're going to like it. Uh, I'm telling you, if you're sleeping on ordering it, don't sleep. Don't sleep. It's good. Like, it's legitimately good. Uh, and especially, uh, like, the backup stories in there. Um, I got two written by Chuck Dixon. And there's a, there's this uh, kind of, well, not new artist, but new to comics, Charlie Snogans. You're going to flip out when you see his stuff. But I was feeling kind of bad. Because, to me, this is the type of thing... This is the type of book that should get the success of Jawbreakers comics. It is probably took a year plus to research and write. Definitely probably took a year to draw. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at this. It's got this. It's, it's a hardcover. But then the hardcover, you see it's kind of paper. And then it goes into, I don't know, canvas or something like this. Some sort of woven material over the very, very thick. Um, uh, cover uh, not gold gold ink I don't know um, and just like it's just freaking awesome I was I saw that it was by Oni and I got so sad because Oni's had sales that are so poor the last couple years that they had to merge with Lion Forge a company most people have not even heard of um, but in 2011 or 2012 whenever this came out they were able to put out just you know absolute just masterpieces like this 2011. So, like I said, I did some cursory uh, research. It didn't sound like this really got any kind of big notice at all. I know my buddy, like, as soon as I kind of, like, drew this out of, you know, 
the uh, uh, like he's like, oh, that's a good one. You're gonna like that. He's like, are you gonna read it? Are you gonna do a video? I was like, this is a lot of pressure. All I did was like pull it like one inch out of the bookshelf. It's can I can I pull can I pull half of it before I'm committed? You know, because I thought this thing was gonna take me like a whole week to read. I read this in a couple hours. In fact, I kept knocking out like 23rd pages at a time. There's a lot of room to breathe in there. There's a uh, you know, it might seem like it's a little dense dialogue, but it actually moves like really quickly. Like, it's just good. And there's pages without dialogue. Um, uh, but, man, I cannot recommend this enough. Now, where do you get it? Most likely Amazon.com. But I'm telling you. Oh, back, getting back to the thing I said about library comics. Oh, when I say library comics, I'm, I'm talking about comics that you only see in a library. Like, I know how to say library. I just say library because it's funny. Some people are a little confused. Um, uh, but, uh. So when Abai was, you know, controversial, I was like, I've seen artists like him a million times in some really, really good comics. And it's because they're good at acting and they can draw, you know, people in regular settings with, you know, uh, accurate uh, uh, research and um, just making everything. Oh, man, the uh, the murder scene of Rasputin is just like. I almost didn't show it like it's like a spoiler. Spoiler: Rasputin was murdered. I'll just I'll show I'll just show you like the the they, so one of the things I like about this kind of manga style where you take three hundred pages is they have a murder scene of Rasputin. Now technically it already started because they were poisoning, but the poison didn't take. Finally they're like, all right, we have to hit him and stab him and shoot him. So look at this. This is four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14. And I really like when they go out to the south. 16, 18, 20, 22, 22. Well, and then the cops show up and, and Rasputin's uh, dead, but 22 page murder scene. Like, yeah. dude, in my superhero comics, the action scenes are like three pages. I mean, mostly it's kind of showing the beginning and the end of a scene. Um, it's just so good. So find this. I mean, it's expensive. It's it was thirty dollars, um, but you're gonna have it for the rest of your life. You're gonna show it people, and just like my buddy, somebody's gonna pull it like one inch out of you know, being away from you know being flush with the other books, and oh, you you gotta read this. You gotta read this. You gotta read this. So go check it out. Petrograd by Philip Gillot and Tyler Crook. Oh, and if you want, it's comics that matter. I have you know different series i have a uh, hard sell i haven't done hard sell in a while hard sell was for floppies that were really good but just not getting like the attention they need i and i just started one right now it's called comics that matter it's for you know real masterpieces like this finished books that came out and just are not getting the recognition and the financial success that they deserve so go check it out petrograd by philip gelat and tyler crook by uh, oni press oh yeah i was saying Eight years ago, Oni was putting stuff like this, and now they're putting out Mags books and Rick and Morty book, Rick and Morty comics, and they can't sell anything, and they're flopping, and they have to mar merge with freaking Lion Forge. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit, and I'm gonna be on three days, most likely for most days until the end of the year, and I think I should be able to get through my backlog. Thanks for watching. Bye.